I making a statement? You want me to make a statement, John, just so you got something you can. Uh, obviously excited after the win with uh, our performance against Alabama. Thought we played very well, and and just happy for the guys. Do think it took some out of us, so we've we've kind of had to regroup and recharge here the last couple of days. Um, but I think our mindset is good, and we certainly have moved on to Pitt, and uh, you know excited to start ACC play. Jeff's done a really good job with their program here the last couple of years. They've got another super talented team. Um, we had one heck of a game with them. It was one of the better games of of the year last year um, against Pitt up there when we won um, and expect it to be a great environment in another very challenging game. So um, like their team, the point guard Carrington, the freshman, is unbelievable. Um, he's, he's just super talented and plays with a lot more poise than most freshmen. Um, can score the mid-range, make threes. He's had a triple-double already. He's just a uh, highly talented, uh, rare freshman. Um, Henson, obviously, is a really good player who can shoot it from anywhere and, and uh, you know, has the experience of last year's success. Um, and so he's, he's done a lot of really good things. Leggett, who they got out of the portal, has, has been a really good addition to their team, he and Zach Austin. Uh, at the at the other perimeter spots, and then you know we we always have liked their big guys, uh, the twins, and then Federico. Federico, I thought when they moved him into the lineup last year, it really helped their team and and uh, his athleticism and ability to run the floor and rebound and defend is uh, really good. So uh, expecting a great game. I know we're going to have to play really well to win. Um, you know, obviously excited about our preparation and. And uh, looking forward to a competitive matchup. Can you talk about the absence of one of the guys that you have to approach this week a little bit differently against this team? A little. Um, you know, we got home at 3 a.m. the other night, so and we were off the next day. Um, but yesterday, we really didn't we didn't do anything physically. We just watched film on Pitt, talked about their personnel, walked through some things, um, tried to give our guys another day to just kind of, you know recharge a little bit also we had some bumps and bruises from the game that you know with this stretch we've got coming up we needed to give that a little bit of attention um, so I thought that was the right thing to do I thought our guys approached it well yesterday um, you know and obviously we talked about hey today and tomorrow we got to have competitive practices we got to get back at it physically and we really got to go compete and uh, you know continue to build really good habits through practice and uh, um you know, so I'm excited to see where our guys are. I think we'll be recharged and really ready to go. No, uh, it's. I think it's a ligament that's kind of a rare injury that uh, the trainer says he really hadn't seen, um, and he could be out a month. Um, so it's just it's unfortunate. Obviously, he's. You know, I, I, fe I hate it for him because he's had a bunch of these lower leg issues right now, and he's like he just can't quite get past it. He was starting to do some good things. Obviously, he played very well in the Davidson game, um, made some big shots for us. Um, but he's, you know, he's battling, um, and Jack Clark is still really battling as much as he can. Um, but he's got he's got a good bit of soreness, um, and so we, you know, it's it's been challenging for him uh, as well late. So we we just gotta. Hang in there. Um, that's why we gave a, an extra day yesterday. Some of the other guys beat up a little bit. We just felt like we needed to try to get as healthy as we can. Um, you know, we were fortunate we had a little bit of time for this pit game. Coach Lynch made light work. Josh Tate was able to get his end of the first half. Now, yeah. Now I'm sure the way he's playing against Will and Hunter is that maybe yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, those guys. It's it's important. Like we've talked about it. You. you, you you got to have eight, nine guys to, to have a successful team. You really do these days. Um, as hard as you need to play to, to, to win, um, it's going to take a lot out of you. And if you play with any pace, and the games now are played with a lot of pace. And uh, so you're going to need a little bit of depth. And certainly their quality play is important. Um, I think Dylan does a really good job guarding the ball, fighting through screens, and then just, you know, helping to run our team and, and 
find guys when they're open. He's making open threes when he has them. Um, you know, but sometimes when he's out there, we've got four guys that can score. You know, having a distributor is a is a really good thing. Um, Josh is a guy who is wired to score and make some plays. And, and uh, you know, I think it was really hard for him. He was playing pretty well in practice leading up to the car accident. And then when he had the accident, missed three weeks of practice, um, it set him back. And then you're trying to get used to playing with a mask and all that goes with that. And um, But he's, you know, he's gotten more comfortable. He's got his legs back under him. You know, sometimes he tries to do too much when he just needs to, like, let the game – settle in a little bit um uh, but you know i think he showed that against alabama he was he was good in his minutes um he helps us guarding the ball and uh you know i'm really happy for him and hopeful that that, that will continue going to the alabama game obviously cj uh, rj got in the foul trouble how are y'all because obviously not having cj hall on the court is a tough thing to battle he played 21 minutes how is how are y'all working through that kind of navigate that obviously with you yeah, you just, I mean, there's not a lot you can do. You got to, you know, I thought his first foul was a very poor call. Um, but those are going to happen. Um, you know, you're just constantly talking to him about it, right? Showing him things that he can do better technique wise. And sometimes there are situations where he needs to, he needs to step back and, and get away from a play that's, he's kind of late arriving. And, uh, you know, he, he's had a couple of those this year where he's, Somebody beats another player, and he's kind of coming over to help late, and he's he gets a foul. Um, he's got to be a little smarter on some of that, and so you know it's it's a fine line. He blocked four shots the other day. He played really well around the rim. Um, you know he wants to be his competitive guy. He wants to be involved, um, but there's also some times you got to just let one go if you're late, and uh, you know so you're just trying to teach him, coach him, encourage him, but certainly. Yeah, I don't want him playing 21 minutes. I want him out there 28 to 32 uh, in most games. And so, um, you know, it's it's a process. Uh, RJ's kind of the same way. I mean, RJ's an active energy player. He's going to be involved in some contact. He's going to make plays. He's, he's going for rebounds. So there's going to be some times when that happens, when you have aggressive guys, you know, they're, they're going to occasionally foul. Uh, you got to be careful that you – you don't want to take away their aggressiveness, um, you know, and I certainly don't want to do that with RJ. Speaking of RJ, um, just the way he's finishing in the post, um, his energy is transferring into the big guy that's getting more comfortable. Yeah, his skill level's a little better, right? Some of it is all the work he does with Coach Bender, um, you know, before and after practice and all the work he did all spring and summer, just getting his left hand better, finishing better with his right, you know, making a few more perimeter shots, which he can do now. Um, working on his driving, um, you know, it's skill development. I, obviously, we, we spend a lot of time on that. I think our coaching staff, my assistants, do an unbelievable job with that. Um, and guys generally get better. Um, you know, how soon does it happen? Sometimes it depends on the player and how much they can adjust to, to taking what they're learning and applying it to the game. You know, RJ is obviously a terrific athlete. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's quick, he's strong. And uh, so he can he can make a lot of plays that way, um, you know. But part of it also is the confidence of seeing the ball go in a few more times, and just being a little bit more comfortable in the game slowing down and kind of knowing how to use your moves and what moves to use and and all those kinds of things that he's he's becoming much more comfortable as a player. Is it, is it something that you saw coming in the lineup for this team, or is it just the way things have gone? No, I think it's just been something that's you know taking some time. Um, but, you know, he, he could get some balls in even as a young player. He was strong enough to get some in. I think now it's just like he had a play against Alabama where he drove it and, you know, turned it into a, a Barkley back down. And, and, you know, he wasn't doing that when he first got here. Um, that's, that's stuff we worked on with him. And, um, you know, that, that takes some time and, and again, some confidence and, and understanding how, to, how and when to use a move. Um, so it's, but you know, he's been working on that for, you know, a year and a half now. Um, so it's really good to see. Yeah, yeah. I think some of it's confidence. Some of it's just uh, strength. 
I think you're just bigger and stronger as a junior. You're more comfortable. You're, you know, you're aggressive in your approach. You know, sometimes as a younger player, you're just a little bit tentative. Um, you know, that was probably a little bit the case with Ian. He's always had good hands. He's a better athlete than people think he is. He can he can really jump. Um, you know, he's he's st sticking his nose in there for sure. I mean, I thought he was an unbelievable warrior in the game. I thought he was phenomenal um, against Alabama. I thought he played as well as anybody on our team because he did what we practiced all week leading up to the game, not just rebounding but ducking in and and physically playing defense. Um, I just thought he had an incredible game against in, uh, Alabama and a couple of the plays. The play where he kept two balls alive with offensive rebounds and it ball ended up being batted out to uh, PJ and he threw it to Wiggins for a dunk was, I mean, that was an incredible effort play um, where Ian got his hand on the ball twice and really he was the reason we scored on that play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. You know, he didn't – what I'm really proud of Chase for is he didn't play very well in the first half. Um, he had a couple shots that were good, but he was trying to be a little too aggressive uh, too quickly in the open court. Um, you know, I think he just wanted – he was so excited to play and it was a great environment and he wanted to make some plays, but he was just a little bit out of sorts. I mean, he just got sped up and he was probably trying to do too much. And in years past, not last year, but when he was a freshman and sophomore, that would have crushed him for the game. Um, you know, last year and this year, because now he's a good player and he's just more mature and confident, you know, it didn't – I just had to sit him down for a while and tell him, hey, relax, catch your breath. You know, you don't have to go make every play right now. Let the game come to you. And, but the shot making he made in the last eight, ten minutes – was similar to the shot making he made at Pitt last year for us to win. I mean, it was high level shot making that if you're going to have a good team, you got to have great players. I'm fortunate we have some really great players. You guys had really great players last year, but in which part of the season last year? PJ wasn't all the way healthy. I've been right. asked by that a lot. You know, it, I also can't help but look at that that Alabama game um, garners a ton of attention, and that seems like one of those that it you had played that this time last year. It was almost that belief and deserve. I think our I think we had the belief. I don't think it was that at all. I just I don't think PJ Hall was like you watched the game we lost to Iowa last year. It was a similar game. It was a neutral court game, so it wasn't you know, the environment wasn't as hard, but the the quality of the opponent was a good one. And PJ was really non existent. I mean he just that was probably his low point. Um you know and He's averaging 21 points a game now. I mean, he's playing at a high level. He's, you know, I mean, he's moving much better on both ends of the floor. He's rebounding better. He's just healthy, you know, and he's, he's, uh, it's, you know, it's, I'm, I'm, I feel bad for him because he hasn't really been that way and he hasn't been, he's had to kind of really work his way into it. And he's always been this talented. Like, if he'd have been healthy his whole career, it's amazing what he would have done. I mean, he's already going to have, I don't know how many, he'll end up with 1,500 points, but he'd have been close to 2,000. I mean, he's he's that kind of scorer and player who's had to play through injury um, for many, many games in his career. And so I, I think that's the real difference. I've been asked that question a lot. What's the difference this year's team and last year's team? The biggest difference is a healthy P.J. Hall, um, you know, we, we were a good team last year, but we became really good when P.J. was, was healthy, which didn't happen until after, um, after Christmas. Um, fortunately for us, he's been healthy all year because um, he's, he's a stud. I was asking him about that health journey and the struggles of going through that, and not just physically, but the mental yeah, side of it. That's absolutely. So huge. He said that um, he maybe didn't ask for help as often as he should have, yep. but mother's intuition helped in some of those hard times and that you yep. uh, and, and some of your staff members really helped. Yep. What's it like to navigate? I mean, that's a conversation hard. you weren't allowed to have yep. 10 years ago. Yep. Uh, you know, early, er, er, you've been coaching a long time. Yes. It's become much more accessible of a conversation. How do you navigate that? Well, those are hard conversations. You know, you never want to watch your players struggle 
um, especially when you've seen him playing well like P.J. was at the end of his sophomore year. And then his junior year, I mean, he doesn't look like the same player. It's hard. It was hard to – it's hard for him to play that way. I mean, his mother, I told, I've told i said this many times, his mother came to me crying after the Iowa game, and we were both really shaken a little bit by that. I was more shaken that, you know, his mother was was so heartbroken. P.J. was broken. Um, it was it was a hard time, and we had some very, you know, serious conversations, meaningful. Um, but those are challenging times. That's why you're you're so – blessed to be a part of somebody's life that would want to share those kinds of moments with you. Um, but you also understand the responsibility to try to help them get through it. And uh, when they're not playing well, when somebody like that is not playing well, I mean, I feel partially responsible. Like it's with all my players, it's my job to try to put them in positions to be successful. So when they're struggling, you know, as a coach, there's, you bear some of the responsibility and uh, you know, I just I didn't like seeing PJ in that that situation. It was hard um, on all of us, and it was emotional, and and it was it was it was hard for our team because he's such a big part of it because he's such a good player, and it was hard for us to get past all that. So I'm, you know, again I'm really proud of him because I, I've said this for, you know, his sophomore year when he was playing with a stress reaction and he was barely practicing, some of his performances were unbelievable. Um, and the heart that he was showing to, to fight every day. And I know he was playing through some pain and, and, you know, he did it because he cares about his team and he wants to be a good teammate and he wants to help the team win. And he was trying to do it that junior year, but it just it wasn't working as well. And so he became really frustrated and upset and he was losing confidence. And so um, that's our whole thing of Clemson grit. Like there's going to be a lot of challenges during your career. It never just goes – the way you want it to go. It's never going to be perfect. There's going to be ups and downs and teaching your players how to manage through that and try to help them get through those situations is, is you know, your job. And, uh, you know, you're just so excited when they do. When you watch a Hunter Tyson grow and mature and become the player that you knew he could be or P.J. having the kind of success this year that he deserves because he's finally healthy and playing at the level that he can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mental health is really important. Um, it's uh, these kids have to deal with much more than we ever did when we played. Um, you know, certainly the pressure of the level uh, and the amount of people that are watching you, and then obviously with all of social media and everything that you know you hear and see and read and. You know, I try to encourage our guys, sometimes you need to put that stuff away because it's not healthy. Um, but that's hard. Uh, it's not, that's not real realistic in a lot of ways. They're, they're going to look at some of that stuff. And, uh, but it, it does create problems. Um, and I think we sometimes lose, lose sight, all of us, that they're 18 to 22. You know, you've got somebody, PJ, who's 6'10", 240, and looks like a grown man, big, strong kid. But emotionally, he's not, right? And we're all vulnerable, no matter how big or small you are. But um, these guys are putting it out there. The athletes, men, women, they're all putting it out there. And the amount of time that they work is so – I mean, it. they earn their scholarships and then some. And when it doesn't go well, it's, it's much more understandable that they take that personally and have some challenges that, that then creep in. Um, and so the mental health, mental health aspect is much more important. And certainly, I'm pleased with how we have that; those uh, people here ready, ready, able to help. I always mention you never know who's watching your story. And I mentioned this to PJ that um, you know I, when I asked him how did you ask for help or was it people's always saying on your side, how do you navigate that, bring it up, or or encourage your athletes? Yeah, you talk about it. Well, we certainly talk about it with our players, and we have we have a sports performance coach that's around on a regular basis now, um, and that's that's different from you know many previous years. Um, and so you're you're hopeful that 
that they get involved and you're encouraging your guys to to build relationships with them you know before they think they might need them right and it's it's not just for performance um, there's some stuff that's for performance and then there's other things that that develop that um, maybe they need to see somebody else um, but I do think that is something that this generation has become better with in terms of asking for help um, when they know that it's there. Um, it's our job to make sure that we have all those things available and that they know they're available to them. So I do think our I think Clemson does a terrific job of that. You mentioned Jack Clark earlier in the game before, but if you feel like mentally you have an understanding. I think he's in the same place that I was talking about with PJ. Um, he's not even he's not close to a hundred percent, and he's trying to play, um, and he's frustrated. Um, the poor guy, you know, had a surgery that didn't take. He had to do it again. He's been battling to try to get right. He's I mean, he lives in the training room, you know, but he's still just really sore all the time. He's he never feels. I don't think he feels good. And so, you know, I've talked to him about, hey, if you need time, you know, then take it. Like, we, we've got to figure all this out together. But he wants to play as much as he can. But I think the last couple of weeks have been hard for him because I think he thought it would be – it was feeling a little better, but now it's still not really getting as – getting better or it's not as good as he thought it would be. And, and you know, then there does become some mental to it too, right? Like there's – um, you know, he's not playing the way he probably knows he can. It's He probably feels some things while he's playing that give him pause. Um, you know, the, the other challenge in all of this is, like, if you only play when you feel great, you're not going to play a lot, right? It's like, I mean, there's that's just the nature of all this, right? Now, there's the severity of the injuries is different, and his is, his is much more challenging. And so – Monitoring that with the, the trainer, um, we're trying to do it every day. He doesn't practice as often as everybody else. We're still just kind of trying to work through it as best we can, but it's it's been a really hard couple of weeks for him. Have you ever asked him about game time, whether it's any time started he have on standby? A little bit. You know, I'm, we're, we'll see. Um, you know, we didn't anticipate. We thought that Alex would end up being fine and – Jack would eventually work his way. We knew there'd be some soreness, and it would take some time. And but hopeful that hey, we we've still got ten, eleven guys. We're good. You know, there could come a point where that happens. I you know, we haven't talked about it a lot lately. We've talked about it a little bit. Just you know, if Jack can't get better, um, what does that mean? And if Alex is hurt, now we're down to nine guys. Like, but you also have to talk. The kid has to want to do it. Jake has to want to do it. Um, so we'll see. Um, you know, it's there's a lot of balls in the air still right now. Anything else for Clint? I guess just uh, talk about Pitt. Obviously, he's not in the conference brain just yet. But what's the value of? Yeah, I think it's a big game. You know, obviously it's a it's a road game against a good team that. You know, it's it's these games are different because they are so far ahead. It you know you have to flip flip your gears a little bit and flip the switch and and change gears. I guess I should say in terms of just hey guys like this. You know, this is a conference game. If you want to finish in the top of the league, they're all really important. Um, you know, and so that's why we talked yesterday about we got to we got to get past the Alabama win, right? I mean, it's. Um, you know, that's the hardest thing in sports is complacency. Human nature is to, you know, for the last 24 hours after the game, we all got great text messages and pats on the back and all that. And that's great for 24 hours, but after that, you better move on. And, uh, you know, so we talked about that a lot yesterday. And are we mature enough to, to uh, prepare the way you need to to beat a good team on the road? Because we have to go back on the road, and it's going to be a hard environment. And they, you know, they lost their last game. Um, and it's the first conference game for them. They're going to want to hold serve at home, and um, they've got pride based on, on the players and coaches at their place. And and uh, so we know it's going to be a, a very competitive game, and if we don't 
play really well, we won't win. And so we've, we've got to approach that appropriately. And I think, you know, I'm excited here at 2.30 to see how we practice.